Hello, hello. It's the start of a new week here on Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. How's everyone doing today? Thank you for joining us here as we jump into another easy, flavor-filled, fun recipe that you'll be able to uh, recreate at home without much uh, mess or fuss or anything like that. I am Montana Max, and you're watching Montana Max Barbecue TV. Uh-oh. Oh, We've no, got a puppy. It's a puppy. <laughs> Just leave her. Okay. Uh, we are coming to you live from the Ozark Mountains here, and we are going to be doing an awesome uh, chicken mushroom spinach risotto dish here today. We had to make some audibles here on a few ingredients. We'll, we'll discuss that as we go here. This is not going to be a traditional risotto. Very similar. We're going to talk about the different cooking techniques and all that good stuff. Uh, and with me, as always, is the incomparable Kansas City Jen coming to you live all the way from across the room in our tiny house in the Ozark Mountains. Say hi, Jen. Hello, everybody. Hello, oh, there and there she is at the chef's table. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now we can see your smiling face. There she is. And feel free, one of the awesome things about Kitsch.com here uh, is right over here, right there, you can join us on the chef's table mm -hmm. at any time. And you don't have to join with your video if you're having a bad hair day. But you can join just with your audio. You can join us just like that Jen showing you. Click it off and you just have that. But you can join us on the chef's table and we can hear your audio. And let's make sure I turn my audio up, actually. There we go. We should be good to go there. And you can uh, be part of the show with us. Ask your questions. Hang out right there. Also, on this side, of course, we do have our chat as well, which we're monitoring. Uh, and if you have questions. And you feel more like a type of typey, go ahead and put them in there or just say hello and let us know you're here. We always love uh, meeting new friends, uh, new and old, right? And you can raise your hand. And just you can like raise that. your hand just like that if I'm rambling on, which has been known to happen. Uh, if you have a question to let me know that, hello, I'd like to ask you something. And then I'll look over here to my monitor where I can see your smiling face and we will proceed thusly. Yes, yes. All right. Yes. And we've taken the liberty of getting a few things out of the way here. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and do the, we always do a quick tour around the kitchen to make sure you're orientated just fine. We've got our main view here with our above head camera. So you can see all the magic that's happening on the cutting board. We also can flip it right over there where we'll be making a risotto on the stove cam as well. And if it's hard for you to see, fret not my friends. There we go. We can make it more manageable and bring it up on the big screen. Your aerial view. We've got a side angle view. If we want to get real in there, look, it's like Adam's family. Uh, and then, of course, we can take it over to the stove as well. There we go. And by the way, like I said, we are dealing uh, with some some ingredient variations today. Nothing super super dramatic because we're in the middle of a sleet storm here <laughs> in the Ozark Mountains. So it is very slick and very dangerous to be out driving today up and down the mountain road. So we've made a few adjustments to the recipe. Uh, but well, like I said, we'll talk about those as we go. But isn't it pretty out there? It is pretty. It's pretty. It's definitely you can pretty. You see the mountain ridge in the back there too. Yes, you can. So this is where we're uh, coming from. We typically, if you watched any of our shows this weekend, we do uh, cook outside on the regular as well. But today it's going to be inside for comfort and warmth and safety is we are sitting right about 19 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's jump into this. Let's do a little prep work here. Let's get things ready to rock and roll. I'm busting out my chef's knife. I've been using my vegetable cleaver a lot, but I want to mix it up today and use my chef's knife. So we've got our chef's knife here on the cutting board. Very simple, very easy prep. We'll jump into the cooking process as well. I've already gone ahead where you, we've just did some basic Italian seasoning on a chicken breast, and we've got that cooked up, ready to go. Let's go ahead, I'll show you that. It's just keeping warm in the pan here. I'll grab the pan. We'll flip that over. There we go, we've got some beautiful seared off chicken breasts right there. Look at that, some nice color on them. So we will be coming back to those in a little bit. Okay, so we'll flip that back, and let's jump right into the prep work here. We are doing a mushroom spinach risotto. And we've got some beautiful baby Bella mushrooms right here that are decent size, looking good, all ready to go. Remember, mushrooms go on the ground. Always wash your produce, right? Always wash your produce. We don't want dirt. We don't want ickies. So we're always going to give them a quick wash, okay? Uh, at the very least, with mushrooms, I know there's uh, a lot of people who don't believe in washing your mushrooms off. 
wipe them at the very least with a damp paper towel to make sure you remove all of the dirt and stuff from these beautiful ground fungi. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab our blade here, and we are going to go ahead and slice these through right quickly, coming down. Just like so. Easy prep work today. We just have to prep uh, our spinach and our mushrooms, and we're going to get right into the cooking process here. There we go. Very easy, very quick, perfect for a weeknight meal. Also very cost effective. Great way to feed your entire family uh, on a budget as well. You can really do this whole dish uh, for a family of four very easily for under $20. The chicken's going to be uh, the most uh, costly of items. But everything else, very reasonable and very easy to do. Look at it. We're already through half our prep. We're already through half our prep. How easy is that, right? Consistent, nice, easy slices. There we go. And that's a little bit of a slippery guy there. We'll just cut him in two. All right. Mushrooms done. Nice and easy. And let's go ahead and just get our heat going on our pan back here so we can start doing our risotto here uh, in just a moment, right? Traditional Italian risotto is a longer process. It's a 20 to 30 minute cooking process. With the, with the rice that we're using today, it's going to be a much quicker process, which is nice. Not everyone has the time. If you got kids and family and PTA and stalkers and you know stuff going on, not everybody has time to sit there and stir a risotto for 30 minutes, okay? I'm just going to go ahead. We're just going to rough chop this spinach down here. So I'm just going to get it into a big bundle here and just kind of do this, this sort of deal. We don't need it to be super tall or super cut down. We just need to break it down a little bit so when we get it into the pan, it'll start wilting down a little quicker for us here. So we're going to get all this beautiful green here. And a lot of spinach will reduce down a great amount, right? So we're going to get heavy-handed here with the amount of spinach. And that's pretty good. That's about all it takes. How easy is that for prep work? What else are we going to need today? Well, we've got some beautiful Parmesan cheese right here that we're going to be using. And I've got a little bit of a Parmesan block here so we can add our finishing touch on top. We'll grade that freshly on top. You're going to need some stock, okay? We've got right here some vegetable stock. And this, uh, if you remove the Parmesan cheese, which risotto does not require cheese, okay? The creaminess comes from the starch of the rice coming out during the cooking process. So cheese is not mandatory. So if you remove the cheese and you remove the chicken, you really have a great uh, vegetarian or even vegan style meal here, especially if you're using vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock as well. Now here's where the banger comes in with the substitution, right? Risotto rice uh, is like a basmati rice typically. And we, and you'll see here and you're watching in the video and then you put in the comments and you go, oh, Mark Hanna Max, that ain't rice. It doesn't look like basmati rice. That's because it's not. Okay, this is a special ve vegetarian, vegan, mushroom, vegetable rice that we have here. So that's why the color is different. And that's why this cooking process is going to be quicker and um, not the traditional risotto process. But we're going to do it risotto-esque, right? We're going to add some Parmesan cheese. We're going to do kind of the same cooking process, if you will. But... For everyone in the comments sections, because we typically put our shows up on YouTube later and they're going to be like, that's not risotto. <laughs> yes, we know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Make sure to follow and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is, I've seen risotto. That's not risotto. Risotto-esque. Risotto-esque, right? Quicker, quicker version. Quicker. Right? Quicker, quicker. And a little healthier, and, actually. Well. A little bit, right? No, not necessarily. Oh. There's no real health difference here oh. in doing a traditional risotto. Because like I said, when you're making risotto, the creaminess of that does not come from the cheese. It comes from the removal of the starch in the slow cooking process. Okay, so let's get a little olive oil in the stove back here. If you remove the cheese and just went, you know, with the straight rice, that would be yeah. slightly healthier, I guess. Well, this you... isn't an unhealthy meal. No, it's anyway. not unhealthy at all. Actually, it's very healthy. Yeah. Lots of vegetables. So we're just going to get a little olive oil in the pan here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our rice first. I'm going to bring over our vegetable stock. which We've got about two cups worth here of vegetable stock uh, that we're going to get in there. And the first thing I'm going to do, let's grab a wooden flat nose spoon here. Ha ha. There we go. 
and we're actually going to toast off our rice a little bit. We're going to add that extra flavor. I always do this with rice, pasta, pasta, uh, not like spaghetti noodles, but couscous. like orzos, couscous, that type of small pasta, uh, and also uh, nuts, right? So let's go ahead. Pan should be relatively warm here. Let's get that in there. And we're going to go ahead and mix it up and just toast this off. Now, this is a vegetable uh, made rice. So this isn't even a typical grain rice either. So if you have a grain deal, uh, you can find this vegetable rice in stores. And can you explain why you toast it? Yes, I can explain that. Will I? Absolutely not. <laughs> Okay. Of course I will. Why we toast it, right? Is it we're actually adding another depth of flavor. When we when we're talking about grains, it helps release some of the natural essence and oil of that product. Same thing with nuts. Uh, and we're adding a layer of flavor. Just like just let's compare it to toasting bread, right? If you have a standard piece of white bread and you eat it, right? And then you take one, throw it in the toaster and eat it, do they taste different? Yes. Yes, they do, because we are cooking it, so we're changing chemically the composition of the bread. Things are happening to the molecules here in the rice, in the nuts, in whatever you're toasting that are actually changing the composition to add that layer of flavor, and that's why we do that. That's the simple version, right? But from a, from a scientific molecular standpoint, we are altering the product. To add that layer of flavor. I'm saying you can't see me on camera. You can see Jen, but I'm talking directly at Jen right now. I'm like, <laughs> I like that. Learn this. I learn like this. It. Understand where I, I'm coming from in my toastitude, Jen. I Poor like Jen. Toast much better than plain bread. This makes sense. And we've talked about this a lot uh, here on Kitch, but you know, this doesn't have a ton of ingredients in this recipe, and that doesn't mean it has to lack flavor. And when we're doing our in-person classes and things of that nature, we want to keep this moving in the pan. We want to keep it moving. You don't want to walk away from it because it will burn, all right? We've got medium, medium high heat here. We're working on an electric range, which are notorious for getting hotter uh, quicker, okay? Uh, it only is going to take about a minute here to get this toasted up. And I can actually smell it. I can actually smell the toastiness all right so that's that's good on that but we want to keep it moving make sure we don't burn it and we get a nice even toast all the way around and we're good to go that does smell really good see we got a, just a little just a little bit of oil so we don't get anything burning or sticking on the bottom there and you'll see a slight color change if you're doing this at home and uh now we can start adding in some stock keep your spoon handy see right there hot pan now, when you're doing a traditional risotto, right, you're going to ladle in or pour in a little bit of stock at a time, okay? So we got a hot pan here. It's already absorbing. That's good, but we need some water in there. And I, I'm saying water, but we're using stock. If you, if you absolutely have to do it with water, make sure you salt your water, okay? And we need to get enough in there that's not just going to evaporate off and it hits the hot pan there. We should be able to get a nice little simmer going here. We got these bubbles. We don't want like a rolling boil, okay? And when you're doing traditional risotto, you're you're standing there. You're going to stand there, and you're going to be stirring and working that that uh, stock with the starch so that starch starts coming out of the, the rice, and that's where you get the creaminess. Like I said, this is not traditional risotto rice, so this is going to be a little bit different. But we do want a nice little simmer, so I'm taking that heat down just so it simmers away. We don't want to boil it. We got some nice little bubbles going there. We'll add a little bit at a time and work it together. We're doing good. We're doing Smells good. very good. All right, so now we got this working, okay? We got this working. And I'm gonna actually take our chicken that's been sitting over here and put that on a trivet. And I'm going to help our mushrooms along next to the side. Let's go ahead. Oh, on the trivet. There we go. I'm going to get the heat going up a little bit over here. And let's go ahead and just switch these out real quickly and get this here. And I'm going to help our mushrooms. And we're going to saute our mushrooms down a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead. We got our, we switched our pan over. This is just bubbling away. We're just going to keep adding a little liquid at a time here and let that Continue to do its thing. Little stock going in. Let's get a little olive oil in there. There we go.
And we're going to get our mushrooms into the pan here. Just like so. Let's get a little more olive oil to top them off and let's season these up, okay? And we're gonna use right here, you'll see that on camera, bam, our Mountain Magic seasoning available on our website at montanamaxbbq.com. There we go, we got already a little sizzle going, we're doing good. We're not worried about any cross contamination, so we're just gonna use our risotto spoon. And start working this okay we got our vegetable rice we've got our beautiful mushrooms there and we're going to go ahead and continue see we can multitask i'm just stirring over here a little bit at a time and we've got that simmering and that's coming along good and i'm going to start taking little handfuls of our spinach and start putting that into our uh, risotto here as well let's add a little color let's add a little little spinach is the italian say they don't say that i just made that up <laughs> I... And I'll just bring that over the top there so you can see we've added that in and we've got that starting to work down. We're starting to get some nice texture there with our rice and it's coming together pretty well. I'm going to add a little bit more liquid. There we go. The rest of our stock. Let's go ahead and move those mushrooms. And everything's coming along real nicely. Thank you again. If you're sitting there in the shadows watching us here today, we appreciate you being here so very much. Thank you for joining us on Montana Max Barbecue TV on Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. The last of the spinach going in the pan there. Mushrooms rocking and rolling. Look at them. Roll that beautiful bean footage. We're just going to keep, keep working these down here a little bit. We don't need to work them down to nothing. We're just going to start that cooking process. We'll add it into our risotto here. Make sure we keep that over the burner. Starting to smell really nice. Starting to smell really nice. And we're simmering away. There we go. Now that we've got that simmer going on, and now I'm going to switch these pans back. Flip floppity do. Right, we're gonna flip these around here. Uh, smart, I just thought of this today, but I was like, I don't see both. I'm doing pretty good on the 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 pan flip in here. Keep those mushrooms going. We've got we've got this going. Now we're gonna start uh, before all of our liquid is gone. Okay, see that that spinach? We added that whole bunch of spinach. It's already worked down quite nicely there. We're gonna come back in now with our beautiful Parmesan cheese. And just a little bit at a time. Don't just go dumping the whole thing in there, okay? We want to just add a little bit at a time and start stirring that in, okay? So we're going to drop that in there. Start working it around. Should change the name of this to uh, Norwegian Man Risotto instead of Italian Risotto. Italians right now are everywhere losing their, losing their gourd. <laughs> like, how could you? Well, I just did. I'm sorry. It's like a fusion. It's that's, a, it's that's a popular fusion. now. Fusion recipes, right? Keep it, keeping those, keeping those uh, mushrooms alive, keeping them moving there. Ah, 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 ah. Saute them down. Saute them down. There we go. And we're just going to keep adding a little bit of cheese at a time here. And this is kind of up to personal preference here. We're probably going to use about a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, roughly, in the actual risotto. You'll start seeing this come together here. These are looking good. These are about done. I'm going to turn the heat off on that burner. Let's flip it back over to the stove cam and show you what's going on. Show me what's going on. My falsetto is on point today. Ooh, that That's either good. a good thing for me or a bad thing for you. Either way, we're making delicious food here on kitsch.com and you can see we're starting to get that risotto texture we still have a little liquid in there and that's all right we're working it down but we're getting some of that cheesiness right and now is a wonderful time to add our mushrooms which have sauteed down so let's go ahead and get those into the mix as well absolutely beautiful look at that a little bit more cheese I'm starting to get to stick to the spoon here when I'm coming through. That's kind of when you know you're 
you're at your cheesy saturation point, right? But look at that. Now we can pull our pull our spoon across and we see it's still coming back together, but it's not just runny liquid, right? So I'm going to actually take that heat and turn that heat all the way down to low. Actually off. The residual heat from the pan here should be enough to finish it off. Look at that beautiful color, beautiful flare. Vegetable stock has our, uh, enough salt, salty goodness in there that I don't need to add anything. Oh, somebody's happy. Somebody likes that risotto action. Thank you very much for that applause. But yeah, we're looking good there. The, the rice, regardless of what kind of rice you use, should have a little body to it, should have a little texture, a little bite, you know? It shouldn't be hard by any means, but it shouldn't be mush. But look at that. We're looking pretty good there. We're going to give it the old risotto shake, right? Like, you ever see Chef Ramsay do that when they're on uh, Hell's Kitchen where he gives it the little little shake to see the body? I think, I think we're doing okay there. We're going to let that sit there uh, on that residual heat for just a moment. Because I think we're pretty much where we need to be. Let's go over here, back to the main camera. Hello. Look at that. How quick, how easy was that, right? Let's go ahead and get a little plate action out here as well. Let's, you know what? We got new show plates. A couple of them anyways. That's what I want right there. Yeah, getting fancy. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting fancy. If you ever want fun plates, just go to your local thrift store. There's always you can always pick up a fun plate or two that looks really nice for plating, right? All right, let's go ahead. A uh, little mushroom bit there. We we compost, so we got a little compost bucket right here, and I know it's compost because it says compost. So that's good for me uh, and good for the world, right? So we'll have the rest of this uh, spinach and stuff. Let's go ahead and let's just get that in the compost right now. Clear cutting board because I'm going to slice up this chicken. Now, however you want to serve this chicken, right? It's completely up to you. If you want to serve it just as, as a whole deal uh, on the side, if you want to shred it up and put it in, you can do that. Uh, we're going to slice through this here and try to do some strip action. We'll see how it how it goes here. I've got the knife ready. It's cooked through. There we go. Back to the cutting board. Now, meow. I want to be careful here. These pans, these pans hold heat, but we're still doing okay. But don't want to, you know, we did all that work. I don't want it to start burning to the bottom. We're fine. All right. A couple of nice small chicken breasts here. Oh, this is going to be a little bit more shreddy than I anticipated, but that's okay. This one's not nearly as bad. There we go. All right, so we've got our grilled chicken, pan-grilled chicken uh, right here ready to go. Let's go ahead, plate this up, and get ready to rock and roll, shall we? -da -da. There we go. Fun plate. Check it out. Presentation is key. Let's grab our risotto here. And that is exactly about where I want it to be. Look at that goodness. Mm. Now, when you do a risotto, right, it, it, should, uh, it should move a little bit. It should have some body like it does here. But when we put it on the plate, it shouldn't like soup out all over the plate. It should hold together a little bit, which it looks like we've got a uh, pretty decent texture going on here with our spinach mushroom risotto that looks great look at that and it's holding its shape real nicely there so we're doing we're doing just fine that's exactly what we're looking for i'll hold that up a little bit there's our risotto right there look at it Ooh. nice rich creamy holding its shape just lovely and let's go ahead place in some beautiful chicken Line that out across the top there. Just like so. Let's finish it off here with a little Parmesan cheese. 
we didn't have enough cheese in there feel like olive garden or something say when <laughs> There we go. Lovely Ooh. spinach, mushroom, grilled chicken, risotto, finished with a little Parmesan cheese. Let's see if we can take it over to the side angle here. Do -do -do -do. Thank you so much. Can you see my chicken massacre there? That's not the best. And my camera's tearing. Everything always doing great in a sleep storm. But that'll give you an idea there, that beautiful chicken color, right? Mm. See that body of that risotto? That looks delicious. Ooh. Nice, quick, easy, flavorful, perfect for a day where you may be having, I don't know, like a sleety ice storm hit you on the mountaintop. Make you feel good, fill you up, make mm. you feel great, right? So let's go ahead now. I'm going to move this. Set that down there. Let's flip this back. Get a quick picture. Because that does look pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty. Let's get a little fresh cheese because that, that warmth from the risotto is melting that Parmesan down. And then we're going to have Jen come in and do what she does best. My favorite part. Get a couple quick snaps. All right, Miss Kansas City Jen, come say Ooh. hello. Oh, that looks so good. You've seen her. You've seen her on Chef's Table. Now she, here she is, ready to ready be the to official the taster. Now the great thing about Jen tasting food is she has zero poker face. So if it didn't turn out, you will know right away. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna dig in just to the risotto first. There you go. Cheesy. Should be. I added That's enough Parmesan cheesy. cheese for you. Oh, smells good. No mm. parsley. We are out of parsley, Mom. Mm. We are out of parsley. There is no parsley. We that used we used good. the we used what we had uh, yesterday to garnish our bacon wrapped mm. water chestnuts. It but yes, a little parsley creamy. would be nice. Is it creamy? Creamy and the mushroom flavor is outstanding. And that's how we get that uh, umami, right? There we go. Nice big old spoonful. Mm. Really good. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Really digging that. Can't wait mm -hmm. to plate myself up a big old plate of that. Simple. Simple recipe, huh? Simple, easy, and delicious. You don't have to make it complicated. Cooking mm. can be fun. Just what we do here on Montana Max on Barbecue TV. So there you have it. There is our spinach mushroom risotto, our take on risotto, right? Risotto-esque uh, dish that we have for you here today. Thank you, as always, for joining us here on Montana Max Barbecue TV. If you haven't, if you haven't, check out our Facebook, Instagram, and our website where a whole array of sauces and seasonings are available to purchase. Uh, and all of that can be found at Montana Max BBQ or MontanaMaxBBQ.com. Those links are directly below the video. And if this is your first time joining us here on Kitsch, thank you for that as well. Make sure you hit that follow button. And save your spot for all of our delicious content coming up so you never miss a delicious a moment. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Definitely save your spot. We will be back tomorrow at noon. Tomorrow at noon. And Wednesday at noon. And Wednesday at noon. Doing so some more delicious recipes. There we go. Fun, easy, miss. delicious. Um, it's B Rumsey. Hey. Yeah. Looks yummy. May do this for the Super Bowl. And it's easy and it's it's good. It's good. Lots of vitamins and nutrients. Absolutely. Delicious. So once again, thank you on behalf of both of us. I'm Montana Max. This is Kansas City Jen. And as always, for those about to cook. We salute you. We sure do. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.